what is up everybody, if you that don't know me, my name is Mr. Grow, and you're tuned into my weekly grow series. The plants are on day 34 of the flowering stage and they are looking fantastic. The plants are in full flowering mode and the buds are getting fatter every day. They're giving off an intense odor and some of the pistils have turned from white to brown. When I look at the trichomes through a 60x microscope, I can see they're starting to turn from clear to cloudy. One of the most common questions I get is, how do you get such big and dense buds during flowering? There are several different contributing factors to it, so I figured I'd make this video to talk about some of the main ones. First up, which is arguably the most important, is proper lighting, both power output and spectrum. On the screen right now is the power output measured in PPFD that you should aim for. PAR stands for photosynthetic active radiation, and it's the energy that's emitted from the grow light that the plants use for photosynthesis. PPFD, or photosynthetic photon flux density, is a measurement of light density in a given area. All grow light manufacturers should list the power output of their grow light. If they don't, red flag. So in flowering, bud development will be best in the 600 to 900 PPFD range, and you can go higher if you're supplementing CO2 in your grow room. Light spectrum is also important. It's not just the amount of energy that's being emitted, it's also the type of light being emitted that helps bud development. In the vegetation stage, cannabis needs a lot of blue light and not as much red. In the flowering stage, cannabis needs the opposite, a lot of red light and not as much blue light. On the screen right now, this is the light spectrum for a Viper Spectre Grow Light. This light is best for the vegetation stage since it outputs a high amount of blue light. This spectrum right here is from the HLG 550 LED grow light. As you can see, this one has more red in the spectrum, perfect for flowering. Improper lighting is probably the most common reason for small bud structure. Next, let's talk about what nutrients the plant needs in order to grow big buds. The two main nutrients that the plant will have a greater need for is phosphorus and potassium. These are some of the most important building blocks for good bud development. Many growers will use what's called a bloom booster. A bloom booster is sometimes referred to as PK boosters or PK nutrient additives, are a great way to increase density, quality, and yield of your plant during its flowering stage. The bloom boosters that I personally use are Early Bloomer as well as Liquid Blue by Blue Planet Nutrients. Just a quick note, links to all products shown or mentioned in this video plus discount codes will be in the description section of this video. Water the plant when needed. Don't wait until your plant is drooping over because the medium is dry. When the plant starts to droop due to a lack of water, its internal systems are slowing down and therefore negatively impacting bud growth. And the last two contributing factors that I want to talk about in this video are temperature and humidity. So how do these conditions in your environment impact bud growth? Well, if your environment is too hot, your buds could foxtail. This is something I struggle with since I live in a very hot climate. Too hot of an environment could also result in heat stress. Not good. Too cold of an environment could result in slowed growth. Too humid of an environment could lead to powdery mildew and bud rot. And lastly, too low of humidity could increase transpiration and your plant could encounter a toxicity issue. So yeah, temperature and humidity do impact the size and structure of your buds. Okay, so I know I went over a lot there and I'm sure I'm forgetting some things. What are some of the things that you do during flowering that helps grow big, dense buds? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, keep in mind that every plant blooms in its own way. Some genetics have a very rapid increase in bud size between the third and fifth week of blooming, while other genetics put on their real weight in the last weeks of its life. This means that you just have to look carefully at your plants and listen to them uh, to know what their nutritional needs are. I mention this because many beginner growers start off well and think that they have everything running smoothly. Then after a few weeks, the needs of their plant changes and the grower sticks to his or her old pattern, which can result in a poor harvest. I hope you all enjoyed the video this week. I will be attempting to release two videos per week for the next few weeks, so be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already, and click the bell to be notified when I release a new video. If you're new to growing cannabis, I've read a book called Seven Steps to Grow Cannabis, which will guide you through your first few indoor grows. I will leave a link to the book in the description section below, or you can get to it by going to my website, mrgrow.com. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button, and I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace.